card, please. Tennis is facing an ongoing battle to remain relevant. In a highly competitive sports and entertainment market, the biggest stakeholders in tennis are being challenged to keep the game fresh to ensure eyes are on screens, bums are on seats, and rackets are in hands. One area regularly under scrutiny is the traditional format of matches. Best of five set tennis has come in for criticism from some of the sport's biggest stars. Novak Djokovic questioned whether the length of matches was sustainable in fast-paced modern-day life. This new generation of tennis fans and millennials, they don't have a great attention span and they want things to happen very quickly, Djokovic said in 2018. To attract more people and viewers of a younger audience, we have to keep tennis matches dynamic and shorter. Andy Murray agreed. After a stint of commentary for the BBC for a Wimbledon semi-final between Rafael Nadal and Juan Martín del Potro, he told the New York Times, It was a brilliant match, but it was really, really long to sit there as a spectator for the first time. That evening I had a meeting planned and I missed my dinner. People that are sitting there during the week watching that all, I don't think you can plan to do that. A lot of people are going to be getting up and leaving the matches and not actually watching the whole thing. That viewpoint is not universally popular. Roger Federer, for example, has previously called for more best of five sets matches, but even the best of three sets format, used in every tour level event outside of majors and in all women's matches, are being deemed as too long by some working in the sport. Innovators have started tinkering with different formats to try to appeal to a new, younger audience. Patrick Moritoglio, the coach of Serena Williams, launched Ultimate Tennis Showdown, which limits matches to an exact length of time, as is the case in many sports, and features several curious rules, including the use of playing cards to remove your opponent's first serve. Tiebreak Tens, which has largely positioned itself as a warm-up event before big tournaments in the calendar, pits players against each other with the intention of reaching 10 points first. Fast Four, deployed at the next-gen finals in Milan, reduces the number of games in a set from six to four, with a tie-break required if the scores reach three all. And the Lever Cup, the Ryder Cup-style brainchild of Roger Federer, has removed the traditional third set in favor of a first to 10 points tie-break. Tennis is far from the only sport to trial different formats. Cricket, for example, has recently introduced the 100, alongside the more traditional test format, one day 50 over cricket and its previous biggest rebrand of 2020. But have the innovators in tennis been successful? And how would we know if they were? For starters, one clear failure is to get legislation changed at tour level, at least in singles. Unlike 2020 in cricket, no strict format change has been introduced to allow tournaments, such as 250 and 500 events, to move away from traditional best of three set matches. Doubles play features a third set tiebreak with increasing frequency, but there is a reluctance to introduce that into the officially governed spheres of the sport, largely, one suspects, due to the issues it presents with the ranking system. Is it fair for a player to earn the same number of ranking points at a full three set event when another can win the title by winning a set and an elongated tiebreak each round? The ATP has, at least, semi-adopted the Lever Cup into the tour. Players' head-to-heads now include matches from the event and experimented with Fast Four in the next-gen finals in Milan. But given the well-documented issues in attendances and viewership for events below Masters level, would it not perhaps make more sense to introduce some fresh ideas in the lower rungs of top-tier tennis? Aside from the professional game, Another clear barometer of success is how much are amateurs using these formats. Fast Four is popular in Australia and third set tiebreaks are commonplace in the UK, while many will play tiebreak 10 style tiebreaks when practicing. But it's hard to imagine two casual players taking on Moritoglio's complicated playing card format at their local club. The final measure of success would clearly be are they attracting new fans to the sport? And the answer to this is simply, we don't know. Or at least it's hard to quantify exactly how many. Moritoglio has not released viewing figures for his Ultimate Tennis Showdown events. And tennis viewing figures in the UK have been shrouded in mystery generally since the switch to principal broadcaster Amazon Prime. 
Anecdotally speaking, however, it would be a surprise if casual sports fans were particularly aware of any of the alternative formats or could name the events in which they're being used. Put another way, are any of the changes bringing substantial numbers of new viewers to tennis? Given the limited evidence at our disposal, it's hard to be certain, but the answer is surely not. It seems then that for the time being, it's hard to say any of the more recently formed tennis formats have been a roaring success. But to succeed, they will need more support from the governing bodies of the sport. If these formats aren't elevated to official matches, are they really having a fair shot?